In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the electric field due to a charge conducting sphere. So let's say we've got a sphere and it's got a radius of big R and it's got a charge of plus Q on it. And so that's the total charge that's spread over the sphere. And let's say initially we want to find the electric field inside the sphere, so beneath the surface. How do we do this? Well, this problem has this our favorite thing in the whole world, which is symmetry. And in particular, it's got spherical symmetry. And so this means that we can use Gauss's law to find the electric field. And so remember, Gauss's law says that the total electric flux out of a surface is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon, the permittivity. And if it's free space then we're, that we're talking about, this is epsilon naught. And the electric flux is just equal to the integral of the electric field pointing out of the Gaussian surface. So this is of our Gaussian, I'll call it A Gauss, of our Gaussian surface. So the next thing that we have to do is choose our Gaussian surface. So since we're interested in the electric field initially inside the sphere, I'm going to draw a Gaussian surface that's smaller than our outside sphere. Let's try and make it look like it's actually inside this sphere. And it's going to be itself a sphere uh, because we have spherical symmetry in this problem. So let's say that this sphere has a radius of little r, which right now is going to be less than big R because it's inside this, the larger sphere. So let's start by figuring out phi e. Well, first of all, which direction is the electric field pointing? Well, because we've got spherical symmetry, we know our electric field is either going to be pointing straight out of our sphere, or you know maybe if we're inside the sphere, it might be pointing straight in towards us. But regardless, it's pointing in the same direction as our area vector dA. So dA is pointing out straight out of our Gaussian surface. And so both the electric field and the area vector are pointing in the same direction. And this means that their dot product E dot dA is just the two magnitudes E times dA. Now, if they're pointing in opposite directions, we have to add a negative sign here, but we'll just incorporate that negative sign into the electric field itself. So let's just call this E. And this electric field might be a function of R. We don't actually know at this point, so I'll just write it as E as a function of R. But this we can integrate. So if we integrate this quantity, we integrate E dot dA, we can pull out ER, so E is a function of R, because we're not varying R in this integral. We're integrating over the surface that has constant R. And so the integral turns out to be E, which is some function of R times the integral of dA. And this is just the area. So this is just equal to E of R times the area of our Gaussian surface, which is just the area of a sphere or four pi R little r squared. And so we're done figuring out our electric flux. We have it. It's right there. Now all we have to figure out to solve for the electric field is the charge enclosed by our Gaussian surface. But remember, in a conductor, if I put some charge inside that conductor, it will immediately repel itself because charge inside a conductor is free to move around as it wants. And it'll end up on the surface. So we'll be left with no charge inside our surface and all of the charge or no, no charge inside of our sphere and all the charge will end up on the surface. So that means because our Gaussian surface is inside our conducting sphere, it doesn't enclose any charge. So the charge enclosed is equal to zero. So finally, we can set these two equal to each other. So E, which is some unknown function of R times four pi R squared is equal to the charge enclosed, which is zero over epsilon, which is doesn't matter because the charge enclosed is zero. And so we can divide both sides by four pi R squared. And we get that the electric field as a function of R is just a zero. And this is for 
a surface, this is for a Gaussian surface inside the sphere. So for little r is less than or equal to big R, or less than big R. And so that's really interesting. We used Gauss's law to figure out that there is no electric field inside the conductor, inside this sphere. And this will turn out to generalize to any shape of conductor. So this doesn't just apply for spheres, but it turns out that the electric field is always zero inside any conductor. And it's for exactly this reason, that all of the charge ends up on the surface of the conductor. So my charge enclosed, regardless of the shape of the Gaussian surface, is zero. Now, what if we want to find the electric field for R is bigger than, for our, our Gaussian surface radius is bigger than the radius of the conductor. Well, we can do the same exact thing. So we've still got spherical symmetry. So if this is our spherical conductor, and let's say it's still got, so it's still got the same charge on it, which I'll just draw as a bunch of positive charges. It's still got some charge plus Q, plus Q. And now, instead of drawing our Gaussian surface on the inside, if we want to figure out the electric field on the outside, we only need to draw our Gaussian surface with a radius that's bigger than the radius of the sphere. So this is our Gaussian surface. And this is our little radius r. So now r is bigger than, little r is bigger than big R. So this is our Gaussian surface, Gaussian surface. And inside we have our charged conductor, our charged conducting sphere. And so what do we do? Well, we do exactly the same thing that we did before. First, we need to figure out the electric flux, which is just the integral of E dotted with dA along the Gaussian surface. And so dA here just points straight outwards. So it points straight outwards everywhere on the sphere. And similarly, because of spherical symmetry, our electric field is also going to point straight outwards. And since it's a positive charge, we do actually expect it to be straight outwards. And so E dot dA is just equal to the magnitude, so E times dA. And again, the electric field is, is probably going to be some function of little r. We just don't know what that is right now. And so if we do this integral, we can, because we're integrating over a surface that has a constant little r, we can pull this term out. This is just a constant because we're not integrating over r. We're integrating over the surface area times the integral of dA. And as before, this is just the area of our Gaussian surface, which is 4 pi r squared, the area of a sphere. And so our electric flux is equal to E of r times 4 pi r squared. And so we found the electric flux. Now, what about the charge enclosed? So in this case, because our Gaussian surface is larger, than our conductor, we are enclosing all of the charge that's on the surface of the conductor. So our charge enclosed is just equal to plus Q. So now we can finally apply Gauss's law that the electric flux is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon. And in this case, we have, I'm assuming that there's free space surrounding this metal sphere. So that's epsilon naught. And so this is the electric field, which might be some function of r, we don't know, times 4 pi r squared is equal to plus q, or just q, over epsilon naught. And if we divide both sides by 4 pi r squared, we'll get our final result, which is that e of r is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q over r squared. And this is actually, so this is for little r being bigger than our conductor's surface, or our conductor's radius. And you might notice that this is exactly the same as the electric field for a point charge. And so that's because we have spherical symmetry. So just like the Earth 
uh, we can treat as if it were a point mass in relation to the moon or satellites or other things. We can just we can also treat conducting spheres as if they are point charges, which is makes our life a whole lot easier. Finally, I'd like to thank all my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated, and it is you who makes these videos possible. If you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.